There's always a sense of anticipation when we're hiking in any of these little small lakes. I love this kind of adventure. This is so cool. Whoa. Easy, mama. This is nuts. Look at that brook trout. I got him. An Algoma piece of gold. This I highly recommend. <gasps> Easy. Wow, look at her go crazy now. That is what the Algoma country is made of right there. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin, join the club. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Today's Fishing Canada episode is somewhat of a nostalgic one for me. Nostalgic in the sense of the quarry I'm after, the brook trout. These gorgeous little creatures have always been high priority in the Bowman family fishing adventures. To this day, my dad still tells stories of the times running the Nipigon River Rapids in a 20-foot freighter canoe, always on the lookout for this elusive species. My dad used to fish here all the time. He showed me old pictures of his, his specs, and he's got like a six and three quarter pounder, et cetera. And uh, this is very nostalgic for me. Eventually, he started taking me on his brook trout adventures and, in the process, taught me his tricks of the trade and, more importantly, just how amazing these treks in the Canadian wilderness are. So, as you can probably guess, today I'm after brook trout. Look at, Look at that painting right there. But I'm not on the Nipigon, nor am I on a crystal clear stream. Today I'm fishing a small back lake north of the town of Massey in Ontario's Algoma region. Angelo and I have experienced some amazing brookie fishing in these lakes. That's why this is one of the most sought after game fish on the planet. People from all over the world travel thousands and thousands of miles for that little guy right there. That's gorgeous. To be able to sustain such a stable population of these colorful critters and to grow some real brutes, everything must be perfect. I've accessed this lake with the assistance of the staff from Ritchie Falls Resort. They specialize in both fishing and hunting adventures in the vicinity. As with most new bodies of water that I fish, if there's any intel to be had, I gladly go through some fish talk with guides, lodge owners, or locals. These people know their area. So I'm on my way into this little lake, and they're gonna load up the ATV to put the, the new mercury on for me. Got a little bit of extra equipment that we got, and uh, so I'm gonna get in there and hopefully get a cast or two on the shore before they even get in there. And then I'm gonna try my hand at some brook trout. I'm looking forward to this big time. I love this kind of adventure. This is so cool. There's always a sense of anticipation when we're hiking in any of these little small lakes. There's always this feeling of that, it's like a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, so it's so cool. It's just an amazing trek. Go look at this lake, gorgeous. Typical speckled lake, nice clean water, small. Algoma country, heaven. I'm gonna try a few casts off the shore, just because I can hear the ATVs coming in behind us now, so they're already caught up with us. I'm ready. Hope it's not too hot. It's almost fall and it's gonna to be too warm a day. That'd be crazy. Since the lake is small, I'm gonna cover what I feel are the best areas by either casting the shoreline or by trolling adjacent to it. If that doesn't work, I'll move offshore. To cover the lake, I brought in one of the new Mercury propane powered outboards. I'm looking forward to putting it to the test. It's pretty crazy you can hook your barbecue tank up to a motor now and then uh, go fishing. That's pretty cool. Got one! As soon as I put it in gear. Oh yeah. He got off. No, he didn't. As soon as I put it in gear. Oh, yeah. He got off. No, he didn't. That's crazy. I just put it in gear to troll. I'm saying I can't use the murk because it's too noisy. So I'm going to troll to the next spot. 
and I hit a fish. <laughs> Everything was just screwy there. My my line was off the off the. Uh, my bail was still open. I just threw the cast out there. Boom! I had to grab the line and, and set the hook. Might be a trolling day, which I have no problem with. There he is, right there. Good looking spec. Nice, beautiful. Whoa! Oh! Do they ever spin around and catch up on you? Look at that fish. That is what the Algoma country is made of right there. A lot of other stuff too, but I've taken 100 casts today and not a bump. Put the new propane in gear and pop a fish right off the bat. Oh, look at that. Look at that, my friends. That is, that is it for a trout fisherman. I'm not, I'm not a trout expert, but I love trout, and this is my favorite trout by far. That goes through history of my family because my dad was an avid, a crazy spec guy, we'll call him. I'm gonna turn him around and get him towards the net. Oh, baby. Ooh, this is a nice one to start the day with. <laughs> Trolling. Ah, oh, that is so cool. This is so awesome. Can leave them right in the water like this. That's bigger than I thought. That fish. When they rip a drag run, like I don't know if you saw that, just you know, you got some power on in there. So I'm sitting him here in the net. He's, he's fine because his gills are in the water. It's just like a, like, like a live well right here in his environment. 60 degree, 59.9 degree water temperature. So he's good. Oh, look at that. What a beautiful specimen of a fish. That is an Algoma brook trout. Square tail, look at that tail, it's squared off. They call them square tail, that's their nickname. Brook trout or speckled trout. He's got a snub nose. This guy's got a snubbed off nose. I'm gonna put him back right here, folks. Look at that. Are you kidding me? See you, buddy. By all means, I should have lost that fish. I mean, I had my bail open when I set the hook. I like, oh my God. Everything was wrong, but I got her, him or her. So that's cool, a little spoon. Luckily, I just sharpened my hooks too, so let's try trolling again to that point. If I can get a trolling bite going today, casting is bye bye. So the Merc propane, that's probably the first brook trout with a propane mercury ever caught. I'm gonna say it is anyways, <laughs> just because I can. Ah, oh, that is so cool. I got off. Oh, no, he's still there. I think he's still there. Man, these things rip at you real quick. I don't think this is a big fish. I think this is quite a small one, but if this, okay, this is weird. Only because it's exactly the same way as the other fish yet. Threw the cast out, put the boat in gear with the Merc, and the fish bites. Fish is coming in real easy, but, oh. <laughs> little specky, little gorgeous specky. Look at him, tiny, but you know what? He's the right species. Look at that guy. And I just put this little glow spoon on too, so I'm hoping that might be, uh, that might be the ticket. And they say this lake has got, I mean, this, this size, up to eight pounds. I could not imagine. I've never seen an eight pound speck before, I don't think. Rookie, I call them specks all the time, but. Look at that little guy. How awesome is that little fish? That's exactly what you catch in the creeks right there. I'm gonna plier him off because he's got a couple of hooks in him. There should be one out and this guy comes out and we're done. See you little bud. <laughs> That's awesome. Got my glasses wet. That's cool. That's weird. It's got to tell me something. I mean, obviously there's time that goes on between fish when we're out here fishing and shooting television shows. We can't show you every minute of the of the day because it, it's been slow today. But both fish have come as soon as I started the Merc up, took a bomb cast out there, put it in gear, the spoon starts turning, and they hit it. So I gotta <laughs> just keep doing that, I guess. That was two different spoons too, so two different, uh, totally different looks, sizes, everything else. Maybe I'm on to something. My goodness, this is a great trout. Oh, scooped her. <gasps> Easy, wow, look at her go crazy now. I often hear anglers being intimidated when going on their first brook trout fishing adventure on a lake. 
I tell them the way to execute is a combination of bass and walleye techniques. When I cast for brookies, it's almost to the T in the way I work a shoreline for largemouth or smallmouth. Of course, the bait choices are different, but the execution is pretty much the same. If you know how to fan cast for bass and troll for walleye, you'll be fine on any brook trout lake. When I'm trolling, it's just like I'm walleye fishing. I'll vary my length of the line behind the boat, speed up, slow down, and even stall my speed in order to find that perfect presentation for that particular day. Now, as you can see, I'm trolling somewhat close to the shoreline, not bad, but I'm still in 25 to 35 feet of water. To be honest, I mean, I'm a bass fisherman. I love bass fishing, so I like casting more than anything. So I would rather be casting for these specs, and it's very effective at times, but I've tried casting, and I've tried trolling both, and the only way I've caught any fish at all is trolling. I thought I'd have to troll with the electric motor, but instead I'm trolling with the brand new Merc here, and it's, the noise has not seemed to, to bother the fish so far. So uh, if I had my choice, I would cast over trolling, but the name's Cupid, not stupid. I want to catch some fish here, so I'm going to troll if that's what's working. And I still, I stop every now and then to cast, and I still can't get one doing it. So, and what I'm going to keep doing is, is, I tried spinners a little bit, but spoons seem to be doing it. So I've got one on that guy, and one on that guy so far. So I like this pattern here. It's a little, it's a little Clio. It's got beat up brassy gold with red on it. Red seems to work good on these fish. So. I'm gonna stick with that for the most part. It's a heavier spoon too. Nice heavy, small spoon with heavy weight to it. And I'm just gonna keep using that. I'll go back and forth. I'll try minnow baits too, you know, little jerk baits. I'll try everything, but probably the spoon is gonna be doing it for me, so. Got him. I got him. Stay on there. That fish came back a couple of times. You loosen my drag right off here again. Got my drag set real loose. That fish popped me a couple times. I don't think he's very big. He's not pulling hard. Popped me a couple of times. Dun, dun, dun. I let it back to him. He did it again. And the old red and copper colored spoon. Easy. Easy. Typical trout. Head, 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 shake, 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 shake. <laughs> oh, this is a nice one. He just blew a bunch of bubbles out. This is a nice fish. He's better than I thought because I would have swore I had a little wee quarter pound of a cheese on him. Oh, look at that fish, folks. If he gets off now, <gasps> these fish are just beautiful. They're just beautiful and pull. Easy, don't get your head out of the water. My goodness, this is a great trout. Oh, scooped her. <gasps> Easy, wow, look at her go crazy now. That fish did not go crazy until in the net. Spoon come out. Wow. Easy, mama. Fish is nuts. Wow. Look at that, baby. Look at that brook trout. An Algoma piece of gold. Okay. She might flip, she might flop, but that's okay in this situation. I mean, you can't hang on to these fish, folks. I'm telling you right now. They are so slimy and slippery and quick. Look at that. You get a, somebody took an airbrush to that fish. Cause that's what it looks like to me. There she goes. <laughs> that's what I came here for. Drive to, I mean, drive to fishing location like this. The most stunning setting that you can get into. And in my opinion, one of the most stunning fish you can catch. This, I highly recommend. Yep, let me get out of here and I'm gonna catch one more on the troll because that was awesome, she ate it finally. Look at this brookie, woo, good looking fish. Wow. They're strong, man, they are strong and they are gorgeous. To get to today's amazing brook trout fishing, Pete first drove north on Highway 400 to Highway 69 then turned west on Highway 17 to the town of Massey. From there, he drove north on gravel roads 553 and 810 before ending up at the gorgeous Ritchie Falls Resort. 
After enduring the long drive through northern bush country on a gravel road, the luxury and opulence here is a real surprise. It truly is an Ontario fishing oasis. The area I'm fishing today is directly north of Massey, Ontario. Looking at a map, you'll see it's in the heart of fishing country. It's situated north of and in between Sudbury and Sault Ste. Marie. It's south of Timmins. It's flanked by an array of true North Country, heavily forested provincial parks. And best of all, it's only about a six hour drive from those traveling from Toronto. Great fishing with easy access. I got this real wimpy limber rod that I rarely use at all. It's a medium light, seven foot medium light. So the tip is so light that it's really hard to smallmouth fish with. But when you're doing this kind of stuff, for specs especially, and I'm running braid to a fluorocarbon leader, that flex in that rod is actually advantageous. It's like a fly rod. And you, it really flexes because these fish really shake hard. But that rod is so flexy that, that it just seems to help keep fish on. The downside to it and this kind of fishing is feel. I'm trying to, let, to feel that spoon. I can't really feel it. But if you look at your rod tip, you watch it, you're going to see it as do, 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 do. And it indicates if your spoon is working. One right there. I swear to God, I'm just about back to the launch. <laughs> We're gonna call it a day, I think. And I put the trolling motor on, I'm just heading to the launch. Just about to call it a day. And this nice, nice, nice brookie. There he is right there, look at that. What a good looking fish. Whoa, a little screamer. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a good fish. Uh, these are tremendous fish, I will say that. You gotta be real careful when you're running braid too. I got braid on here, so you gotta be real careful when you're running braid because it's so stiff. Look at this brookie. Woo, good looking fish. Wow, screamer. <laughs> They're strong, man, they are strong. And they are gorgeous. I'm gonna get, try and scoop him up, I think. Let's see what happens here. Get in the net. Good looking trout. Oh my God, look at these fish. Look at this thing. Look at that, folks. You can see that thing. That is just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Maybe a little smaller than that other one, maybe. Maybe not, pretty close. What a tank. All over the net, but look at that. If that is not one of Ontario's finest sport fish, then I don't know what is, because that is just absolutely stunning. There we go. I got a gorgeous little fish. That is a beautiful brook trout right there, folks. A beautiful brook trout. Oh. <laughs> they are quick. Everything they do is fast. Wow, amazing. They are they are such a cool fish. Like, like they really are. They should be a bucket list fish of every Canadian for sure. I mean. A lot of Ontario anglers have already caught brook trout, but then, you know, you can do it in the streams. It's one thing, cool out these little lakes, you get a bigger ones like that. You know, so those are getting to be a, a once in a lifetime size fish. Fight great, smaller ones taste great. You don't want to kill a fish like that. Um, they're, to me, they're a bucket lister that everybody should go out and after. I mean, this is, this is world-class fishing right here. This is sometimes the best part of all these whole trips. It's a nice walk out after a great day of fishing, but it just, this is your uh, typical Ontario natural world right here, doing the stuff we love to do. In keeping up with the Bowman family brook trout fishing tradition, this adventure lived up to all the anticipation. Once I found the fish, I caught some stunning trout. It's a Fishing Canada episode that I know my mentor, teacher, and brook trout crazy dad, Gordy Bowman, will be proud to watch. Today's hotspot is one of the many fantastic brook trout lakes that Ritchie Falls Resort has access to. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. A small one third ounce copper and red spoon was the ticket for this trip. I love casting, but soon found out that trolling was the better presentation. It always pays to experiment. Angelo and I always try to bring an electric motor for better boat positioning and if need be, quieter trolling. But on this day, the new propane technology worked just fine. 
For more hot spots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin, join the club. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode was brought to you by FishingCanada.com the gateway to your next fishing adventure.